Hi everyone. So as part of our celebrations this year of 25th May, I thought I'd come on here with a very informal video sharing some thoughts and ideas. Um, why do we celebrate the 25th of May as AU Day or Africa Day? Well, in 1963, the 25th of May marked the day that the Organization of African Un Union Unity, sorry, which is how we were taught in school, was formed. Now it's called the African Union, but it used to be called the OAU. And when we were in school, we were also we were taught about it as the AU Day. Now it's also not lost on me that it is the day that George Floyd was murdered in the U.S. I mean, I don't even want to call it a you know coincidence. It just means that that day holds so much more significance. I also have to acknowledge that I have a nephew who was born on that day, a uh, young man now, so it has many different strands. But today I want to focus on the AU day um, portion and, and what we should be doing more of together, particularly as Africans across the world, to bring the vision and the hopes and dreams and aspirations of AU day uh, or African unity um, to realisation. So I thought to mark the day, I would informally read a few excerpts from my book, The Bold New Normal, if you can see it, Creating the Africa Where Everyone Prospers. Because ultimately, I believe that we have a responsibility to create African prosperity. So let me go ahead and, and read. And I'll tell you the sections I'm reading so that if you have a copy or you ever get hold of a copy, then you know where to go to. So I'm going to dive straight into chapter two, um, page 43. And I'm going to read, so each section I read, I will tell you where I'm reading from so that you can, you can follow. So, page 43, the second paragraph, perception matters. Africa needs rebranding. Rebranding not just as a continent, but actually each country needs to be rebranded. Rebranded authentically. Rebranded not just in words, but in deeds that act on the words. Page 45, paragraph number four. It is time to rebuild Africa's image to project its people, their capacity, ability, and enormous contribution to global economics. The current distorted impression needs to evolve. Page 46, last paragraph. Rebranding Africa starts with its own brand ambassadors. All Africans, home and away, must remember that they are representatives of Africa's narrative. Each of us must consciously ask him or herself, which story will I leave behind? Page 47. We need to be ambassadors first to each other and then to the world. To recount the whole story we live. How we are changing a continent. How we are blazing a trail that is uniquely ours. How the Africa of the history books is fading. Page 52. After all, the great visions we have of the things, sorry, after all, the great visions we have are of things that don't exist. Courage is part of the journey to realise them. Our dreams must certainly include economic progress. For people to thrive, they must move from poverty to prosperity. It is the way it has played out all over the world. In our journey to prosperity, the people affected must be directly involved, not only in the creation of solutions, but also in the delivery of the solutions. Each year, the International Day for the Erad Eradication of Poverty is celebrated, and I, I am compelled to reflect on what it, it will take 
to truly lift people out of poverty. Page 54. I'll actually start a bit from the bottom of 53. Africa's rebranding and the, the branding of black slaves for that matter is to systemically justify the treatment of the African as less than. Most of what is perceived of Africa, even by Africans, is deliberately skewed to present the continent as less than. It conveniently justifies Africa's structured disadvantage, disadvantages, while no one outside of Africa has to acknowledge the benefits gained. I bet at this point you're wondering to yourself, if it is so great, why do we have the challenges of Africans and the rest of the world, the, the challenges Africans and the rest of the world continue to talk about? Simple mindset. There's a widely known saying that the hardest thing to open is a closed mind. Will you open your mind to change? Africa has all the ingredients needed for its people to experience its prosperity. But that experience will only happen if we open our minds to it. We must create new visions of Africa in our minds. We must let the, these visions inspire the language we speak. We speak of positive outcomes for Africa. Our words will change mindsets and open them up. With open minds, we will do the work on the ground to make change. And particularly for young people, I encourage you to build businesses and careers that create African prosperity. Look beyond yourself and personal needs to the possibility of being one of the creators of the new Africa. I'm not saying the road will be easy. I am just, I am saying, keep your eye on the prize. Page 59. So what does the African Union mean to anyone when it's about so many countries who don't fully recognize each other? I have spent a lot of time reflecting on this question. It is not enough to remember the existence of the Union. We must ask ourselves, to what end? Ghana is a proud, is a proud founding nation of the AU. I am inspired by the vision of the leaders who continue to drive the AU. Yet we need a more effective AU. One that believes in and delivers on the potential of each African. To do so, we need each African nation to harness the potential of its people. We need each African to play their part. It is a message I shared with a group of secondary school children it is a message I shared with a group of secondary school children. It was in 2016 at, the, at a school in Matahiku, a suburb of Accra in Ghana. Page 60. Here's what I told them. Your physical shell is nothing to do with your mental capacity. None of us are spectators. None of us are here for the ride. When we move, Ghana moves. We are Ghana. Have a new vision of what is possible. Let what you say tie into the vision you have. Once your vision informs what you say, you will change your mindset. The first person you need to lead is yourself. To develop our country, we need people like you to be bold. And I shall conclude on page 66. Yet, we live on a continent that is filled with people of faith. Faith that does not always include service or self-dignity. Every human being has faith in something and a choice of whom to serve and whether to have self-dignity. By faith, I am specifically referring to belief systems. From a, de from a developmental point of view, I think we should make our faith more practical. 
Faith must be supported with action. In addition to believing, we must act in practical ways to make progress. Pray, plan, and execute your plans to achieve your goals. By service, I'm referring to a willingness to do something for someone else, paid or unpaid. Our history has led us to place to a place where service is treated as menial. After generations of seeing service in the light of master and helper, service has become devalued in our eyes unless the right master is being served. We need to uplift the image of service by treating people who serve with respect. Life itself is about service. To develop collectively, we must learn to serve each other. And we must have self-dignity. Many express this as an effect rather than a cause. I can see the value in that view. By holding demeaning views of people for being younger, less economically capable, less empowered, they learn to demean themselves. By abusing faith and making individuals, individual progress all about outcomes they don't control, they learn self-pity. All these lead to a lack of self-dignity. So, let's have more practical faith, serve willingly like the master who washed feet, show appreciation, and hold people up to dignified, dignified standards of what they are worth. Happy AU Day. Please do leave your thoughts and comments below. Grab the book, The Bold New Normal, that as you spend this day, reflect on what it means to be part of Africa's prosperity. Thank you.